Hey guys, it's Dr. Childs here, and today I want to talk about thyroid cancer treatment options. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to discuss the most common treatments that are utilized um, to combat thyroid cancer. And I'm not going to focus on the specific types of thyroid cancer, but I will mention which therapies are better for different cancers um, as we go. And then we're also going to talk about some of uh, the prognostic indicators, which may mean that your cancer is more aggressive or uh, may alter your prognosis um, in some way. So we'll talk about all these things and kind of put it together. And then lastly, I'll let you know what are the consequences of some of these treatments and, and therapies because they do have consequences and they may be necessary, but it's still important to think about those consequences um, and how they will affect your quality of life after um, whichever one you choose to do uh, or your doctor recommends. So let's jump into the treatment options first for thyroid cancer. And these are specific to thyroid cancer. There are different types of thyroid cancer. There are four main types. Um, but luckily, the most common type of thyroid cancer is also the least aggressive um, and the easiest to treat. And so that's why the number one, I'd say most common um, treatment utilized for thyroid cancer is that of surgery, which is to say you just completely take the thyroid gland out of the body. And so that is referred to as a complete thyroidectomy. So thyroidectomy meaning your thyroid and ectomy meaning removing it. And a complete means the whole gland is being removed. And so this is this is the most common treatment and that is just to say if there's a problem with the thyroid gland, then the 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 best option would be to just remove that part of the cancer. Um, now the problem is most of the time cancer is an infiltrative disease. So you can imagine it you know, wherever it starts, it's going to seep through the tissues and go locally around wherever it is located. And what that means, it's going to go through different tissues. And so it's not always like one big ball of cancer cells just in one place. Instead, you can think of it kind of like a, like a spider web that kind of goes throughout the tissue. And so if you can, then the best case scenario would be to just remove the single part of the thyroid without removing the whole thing. But it's, it's much safer to just remove the whole gland. And that's why, that's probably why um, the prognostic the survival rate for, for thyroid cancer is very high. In fact, the five-year survival rate for cancer, thyroid cancer as a whole is about 97, 98%, which is very high. The reason for that is because the most common treatment is just to completely remove the whole gland. Now, one of the downsides to, to removing the whole gland is that the thyroid is no longer going to be performing the function that it for, that the functions that it does normally in your body. And what that means for you is that it's not going to be producing thyroid hormones any longer. Now, for some people that's an issue and some people it's not, but what it means for you is that you're going to have to take thyroid medication for the rest of your life if your entire gland was removed. And the reason for that is simple. Thyroid hormone is required for life. If you don't have thyroid hormone in your body, you'll go into a myxedema coma and potentially die. And so it's, it's a very serious thing. You need that medication. Um, most, most doctors will tell you all this stuff. I think they will anyway. Um, but just so you know, now one of the downsides to that is it can be kind of difficult. Or let me put it this way. It can be really difficult, uh, maybe borderline impossible to completely match and replicate the amount of thyroid hormone that your body produces naturally just by taking thyroid medication. So those people who have had their thyroid removed will suffer from some side effects, um, because of that removal and, and because we can't perfectly give you back the amount of thyroid hormone that your body um, has lost once we take the gland away. We can, we can get pretty close and, and you know, the, how close you get to 100% really depends on you and your body and what medicines you're using. Um, but all of those things impact how you'll feel after the, after the operation. But for thyroid cancer, it's not always an option. It's not like you, you can just say, well, I, I'm going to keep it in. I'm going to keep my thyroid in. I guess you could say that, but then then thyroid cancer would grow and spread and then that would become a bigger problem. Um, so that's some of the consequences of that. The, the other important thing to, to know is that sometimes the surgery Im involves removing some of the lymph nodes which are around the cervical or the neck area. And so this, this is true for some cancers, not all. It just depends on what, what stage you're at when you are diagnosed and how aggressive and what type of thyroid cancer that you actually have. But remember, the most common type of thyroid cancer is the one that is, the e is easy to treat, and that's just by removing the whole gland. So that's number one, surgery. Number two, radioactive iodine ablation. And radioactive iodine ablation is a special procedure um, in which your doctor will give you um, iodine molecules or iodine um, elements which have been irradiated. And so you can think of them as kind of like radioactive um, iodine molecules that you're putting inside of your body. Now, the reason this is effective is because the thyroid gland just takes up all the iodine in your body. So if it's, even if it's irradiated and it's floating around, your thyroid gland will suck it up and concentrate it into your thyroid gland tissue. And this causes destruction of the thyroid gland, 
because radiation is harmful to the body. I mean, we, we know that, you know that. Um, and so what we're doing is we're using the way the thyroid works against itself. And so it is going to kill the thyroid gland tissue, the good tissue, but it's also going to kill the bad tissue, so the cancer cells as well. Now, this is prim not usually used as a standalone treatment by itself, but it's, it's very useful if used and combined with thyroid surgery, the, so the complete thyroidectomy in some cases. And the reason for that is, is fairly straightforward. Believe it or not, even though we're taking the entire thyroid gland out if you get a complete thyroidectomy, there's still going to remain some portion of thyroid tissue in your body. And that might sound strange, um, but it, it but it's actually true. It's, it's almost impossible to remove 100% of the thyroid gland tissue in your body. And sometimes the, the thyroid tissue is, you know, is, it, the surgeon just missed it, and sometimes it's in different areas. So even if it's in your neck, it could be lower or behind, you know, some areas, um, especially like around that esophagus area. But the point is, you can't get rid of all of it necessarily with the surgery by itself. Um, and so the risk, there is a risk that the thyroid gland tissue may have been seeded by a can even one thyroid cancer cell. If it's seeded into that remaining tissue, then it could grow and then you could, you know, have your problems again. Now, the good news is radioactive iodine concentrates in all thyroid gland tissue. So even if your doctor removed, let's say, 98% of your thyroid and 2% remains, the radioactive iodine will then destroy the remaining 2%. And so it can be useful um, as a procedure that's used in conjunction with a thyroidectomy. But again, one of the downsides would be that, well, first of all, you're irradiating your body. So there's, you are actually radioactive for a short period of time, in fact, several days, in which you can't be around certain individuals as you kind of have to just let that um, fade over time. Um, and then, so that's number one. The number two is you're destroying the thyroid gland tissue. So it's in, you can think of it in a similar way as completely removing your tissue. But in this case, it's staying in your body, but it's just not functioning. So uh, if you think about scar tissue, basically you're turning your thyroid gland into just a ball of, thy of, of scar tissue. It no longer is producing thyroid hormones, which means you'll then have to take um, thyroid medication uh, anyway. So both procedures, the complete thyroidectomy or radioactive iodine ablation, um, if they, you know, RAI can kind of come in different uh, um, intensities, um, but if it destroys your whole thyroid gland, then you will need to take medication as well. Uh, so that's number two. Number three is chemotherapy and radiation. Now, believe it or not, these actually aren't used very often, um, whereas surgery and radioactive iodine ablation, those are, those are commonly used. Now, not everyone needs the radioactive iodine ablation, um, by the way, um, but your doctor can work with you depending on the, how aggressive your cancer is and if they think it's in other places, especially like um, in, in other places in your body, lymph nodes, or if there's remaining tissue and things like that. Chemotherapy and radiation um, are reserved for some very special and aggressive cases of thyroid cancer. So remember I said the most common type is the least aggressive, but rarely, I think it's about 2%, 2 to 4%, some people get these more aggressive versions of thyroid cancer, which grow very quickly. And for those cancers, um, it's, it's just impossible to remove them all, um, or it's too difficult or too risky, in which case chemotherapy and radiation may be used. Um, so those, that's just something to consider. And then lastly, number four would be the use of suppressive thyroid hormone replacement therapy. So let me explain that. Um, so remember I said before, um, thyroid cancer is mimicking your thyroid gland tissue. And the TSH stands for thyroid stimulating hormone. So it is a hormone which stimulates thyroid gland tissue. So if you have cancer cells in your body, there's a risk that the TSH may stimulate the growth of that cancer cell. Does that make sense? So the, the whole goal with suppressive TSH therapy is for, for doctors to give you high doses of thyroid hormones, not even necessarily high, but just higher than, than what they would normally give you, because every time they give you the thyroid hormone, your TSH will drop. It will become closer and closer and closer to zero. So the more medication they give you, the lower your TSH gets. So if we are, as doctors, are providing you with thyroid medication, your TSH will drop to zero, and that's called suppressing the TSH. Now, the, the goal there is to reduce the risk that the native function of TSH helps grow, helps the thyroid cancer cells grow. And so sometimes that's used. Now, there are some potential risks to doing that. I think a lot of them are over-exaggerated, um, but there is a potential risk that taking excessively high doses of thyroid hormone may accelerate bone loss, and it may enlarge cardiac tissue or your heart tissue, which may lead to arrhythmias and some, some heart um, problems later on. Um, but, you know, it, it's sort of like if you're in a situation where would you would you rather have your cancer grow back or would you rather have some of these other conditions you know that it kind of depends on you and your body and your physiology and a number of other reasons now not everyone has to do these suppressive thyroid hormone replacement 
doses, um, but many people do because the doctors feel better while they're doing that. Um, and so, so that's those are the four therapies. Now, I'm not talking about natural therapies or anything like that. Um, the reason is because sometimes it's 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 easier to remove the thyroid gland and eliminate the risk of it coming back and then dealing with the consequences which is the thyroid replacement therapy afterwards so it just kind of depends on your situation but let's quickly talk about some prognos prognostic factors that that um, may ease your mind a little bit so in general you can kind of think of these as how they affect these factors how they affect your outcome and how you'll be feeling after you know your risk of thyroid cancer recurrence and so on um, after um, you've been diagnosed. So number one, the earlier you catch and treat thyroid cancer, the better. Um, so you want to find it at a at a, a stage which is not as advanced. Okay. So usually the stages come one through four. So stage one and stage two, if you can get it in that early stage, your prognosis will be better. Um, number two, certain types of thyroid cancers um, ha carry a better prognosis than others because that what the the type tells you how aggressive they can be. So I'll do another video which talk about the different types of thyroid cancer. For here, I just want to tell you that. But remember, the most common type carry the best prognosis. Um, number four, your age at the time of diagnosis matters a lot. So the younger you are when you're diagnosed, the better. The older, the more likely you are to potentially have a more advanced or aggressive cancer, and that can play an issue. So the 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 age where you want to start looking at this is about 62. So if you're older than 62, those people kind of tend to have more problems than those who are younger than 62. Um, and then lastly, each case is different. So don't stress it. Don't, don't necessarily stress out if, you, if you're 65 and you've been diagnosed. That doesn't mean anything by itself because you might have a stage one, you know, very common thyroid cancer that's easy to treat in a small place. It's not in the lymph nodes. You can just, you know, pull out the thyroid gland and then you'll be, you know, in remission from that point on. So Look at the individual case. Don't focus on some of these other things. But I at least want to introduce you to some of the treatments that are available, the prognostic factors, and then also how they impact your life afterwards. Now, I spend, I'll spend a, I'll create another video which will talk about how um, you should dose your thyroid medication after you have your thyroid removed, because that's kind of a, a topic that I think a lot of people get wrong. And that's the thing that may leave you with, if that if your thyroid medication isn't dosed after your thyroid has been removed or damaged from RAI, then you may have residual effects such as fatigue and brain fog and weight gain and just not feeling like yourself. So it is important to get that dosing correct, but we'll do that in another video. So now I want to hear from you guys. Um, hopefully you found this helpful. Um, leave any questions or comments that you guys have, especially around thyroid cancer. It can be kind of a confusing topic, but hopefully I, I try to simplify a lot of these topics so you understand what they do and why they may be recommended in your specific case. Um, but remember, it's, it's highly individualized to, to you um, and your cancer and your stage. And if it's, you know, all of those little factors, if it's in the lymph nodes or not, et cetera. Leave your questions or comments below. If you like this video, feel free to subscribe or, or like it. Um, and I will do my best to get to all those questions. And otherwise, I will see you guys in the next one.